This is Jelle, this is a trident maple, and this is growing bonsai. Today, root over rock bonsai, three years after planting them up. In another video I explained how you create a root over rock bonsai, so I'm not going to go all the way into the details of that. In short, you select a suitable rock. As you can see here, there's lots of cracks and fissures in this small rock. You then take a young seedling, you put it on top of the rock, then roots can go down at the back, over the front, and this longer root can go into the cracks here. You guide the roots along the rock surface, you wrap the whole thing up. And then you plant it in a pot and just let it grow. Now this let it grow, um, here I didn't just let it grow, as you can see I actually wired out the main trunk of this little plant. Um, you can see it has just been in this pot for the last two, maybe three growing seasons. And yeah, it's now time to have a look at what the roots have done since. Now that's one, this one is the same story, except for I didn't do all that much to the main trunk, I just let the main trunk grow as it is. Now I would like to take these out of the pot, I'm going to remove the wrapping from the rock, I'm going to look at the roots, guide the roots back into the positions where I want them to have in case some roots have gotten weak, and then plant the whole thing up and let it grow for another two years. Let's get started! Look at that root, that's a fatty. You can see that the main trunk and the root here are really starting to get a hold of the trunk, uh, of the rock. The rock and the trunk should become one over time. Here the same thing, you see that the roots really start to merge. Now there's a big root going down here, but it's unclear where it is going to. There's a root going down, really nice, in a nice spot. There's a root going down. I think that the base of the roots now here along the rock surface have attached themselves well enough. And I can actually wrap it up to here and leave the rest above the ground already. That's what I'm going to do now. To stimulate these finer roots here on the rock surface, I'm going to remove the very long thicker ones that grow down. Um, these thicker ones have aided in developing the thicker roots higher up, but if I want to get these young ones to grow out further, I need to reduce their effectiveness. So clipping off the beard. There's a thick root here that I don't want, just like that. Here this is a thick root coming off the root surface, going off. Not going to pull too much. If you pull a lot, you run the risk of just pulling all the roots off the surface. So I'm just going to trim the roots that stand out back. In a year or two, when I repot again, I'll do a more proper pruning of the roots. But for now, it really is for further development. This is a root that comes from here, goes down and ends up here, which is actually really nice. I want this to stick on there, but not this side root, just like that. The reason why I like this is because this is one of those roots that later on will secure the tree to the rock. As said, removing the long stuff that comes off the rock and the thicker ones that stand out. This does set root development back a little bit. But it's not about getting big roots as fast as possible, it is about getting a fine web of roots along the rock surface. After pruning of course, this rock will be again covered with aluminium foil and planted up. Really try to find the big main roots as they come off the rock and trim them back at the rock. Uh, 
and remove the webbing as much as possible. In the end, the roots should really connect with the rock. So therefore anything that stands off the rock should be brought back. Because the roots are still very soft in this area, I covered it up as well. And now, just to make sure that the bloody birds don't make a mess of things here as it is growing together, a little bit of netting. Let's see whether I can manage to do this. So I'm going to look at the roots, because if you let these grow for a long time, you run the risk that some roots get really, really strong and others don't develop at all. And in the end, a good root of a rock has a nice distribution of roots all along the whole ro the rock surface. Um, so let's see. Let's take this out of the pot. Easier said than done. There's a good amount of roots here also on the outside. So that's a good sign that the plant has indeed developed good roots. Um, the question of course is where do they come from? Have they broken through the aluminium foil or do they come from the bottom back to the top? Here you can see a root has grown through the aluminium foil. There's a hole here. Some nice roots here starting to develop. That's really, really nice. But you can see that the foil has really done its job and the roots are following the surface as much as possible. There's a whole mat of roots here at the bottom of the rock. Not sure whether I'm happy about those. Let's see whether I can untangle them or whether I just need to cut them off. This is all matted roots. I don't want matted roots. Um, don't want roots to grow out from the rock. I think I'm just going to remove it. You can see here on this side that this is the place where most of the rocks that uh, the roots have grown. This is one I'd like to remove. In the end I want matted roots of course at the bottom of the rock for the final planting, so I'm not removing everything. This one needs to follow the crack as well. So clearly uh, this tree is on the right way. There is some nice roots that are forming and really clasping the rock going around it. Here another one comes down. This is not really clasping yet. These young ones need to be tied back down against the rock for another year or two. If I look at the other, s other side here. Um, here you see that there's a root that, root that really has started to fuse with the rock going down the crevice into the substrate with a few sub side roots that also are starting to fill the crevice. And I'm really excited about this little root here. In fact, I'm going to give it a little bit of substrate in here. Maybe I should add a little bit of fertilizer here as well so that this roots develops and really fills this crack. I'm going to put some aluminium foil around the rock, push it into these crevices and put it back into this pot, plant it up a little bit higher, maybe up to here and let it grow for one, maybe two more years. I've also added a little bit more aluminium foil here on top so that the small root here gets a little bit more moisture. 
No time like today, let's put this whole thing back in its pot. Now it's just a matter of backfilling it with substrate. So there we go. Replanted, replanted, ready for spring. Note, repotting. There is a little bit of green showing on the buds. That means that the plant is starting to get active. The weather is nice, it's humid outside. These will just go back into the garden and I'll let them grow. I've not wired them out. And that is because these are trident maples. I'm not concerned about making bigger cuts. I'm just going to let them grow a little bit more. And then maybe at the end of the season, I'll cut them back, wire them out. But for now, they can just go back in the garden. Right, we are almost two weeks later and you can see that the timing of the repotting was perfect. They're now fully in leaf. It is a normal mid-March windy, rainy day. So yeah, the backdrop is flying up and down. Grow. This was Jelle, Growing Bonsai. See you next time.